So it's our first morning waking up in San Salvador and we are going to get our first Uber in town today because we're going to a dive shop. Yes, El Salvador Divers. I wrote to them probably a couple of months ago to get the feel and they messaged straight back and said, as soon as you get here, let us know and we'll see what we can help you with. So yeah, we're going to go and try and organise a dive in one of the lakes just outside of San Salvador. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to have a little walk around town because San Salvador is known as one of the most dangerous cities in Central America. Yes. And uh, we're going to try and show you that with a little bit of sensible precautions, yes. actually we can show off San Salvador in a positive way. So we're off to <laughs> see the dive centre and we both need to do a refresher. So we're going to discuss that with Mick. I haven't had a dive since my surgery, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, so I'm eager to meet um, El Salvador divers in person. I think I'm going to need a little bit of a TLC. Nah. Chris keeps saying to me, you're fine, you're an ace diver, but I think... I'm yeah, just, just a bit of TLC. Bit of so TLC. Where, where we're staying is actually in a, it's actually in a little gated community. So there's guards on uh, both sides of the, the, the housing sort of complex that we're staying in. So we're going to walk down to the gate to get an Uber. So this morning we're up bright and early. It's 6.30 in the morning and we're going diving in a volcanic lake. That's active. That is actually still active. So we're really looking forward to this. We're just waiting for the guys from El Salvador divers to collect us and then we'll be on our way. Morning. We are now in the car with Mick from El Salvador divers and we are going off find a lake we are this is Mick here <laughs> and uh, he's a fellow Brit living here in San Salvador and uh, yeah we're so super excited to be diving again today so uh, let's go find a lake So after a half hour drive and about 20, 25 kilometers, we have arrived at the lake, which is behind us and it's looking absolutely beautiful this morning. So the water here in Lake Ilopango is looking really clear. Um, so hopefully today we've got reasonably good visibility. The lake is actually a volcanic lake and before it was a lake there was a volcano standing here. So it's hard to imagine that actually this lake was formed by a humongous explosion 536 AD amazing and uh, it was one of the biggest explosions the world has ever seen and it literally affected the whole globe and uh, today lies this beautiful lake Lake Ilopango and uh, we can't wait to go and uh, see what's beneath the surface So 
what's amazing, Mick has just told us that they've actually discovered a six kilometer magnet chamber below this lake. We must be mad going diving in an active lake. Okay, so the uh, small islands that you can see uh, here are actually remnants of the last time that there was any active movement in this lake and that was in the 18, in 1880 and the lake actually, these islands actually used to be a lot bigger but in the um, huge earthquake they had in, I think it was 2001 yeah, and it makes modern in the background, so that's good. Um, it actually made um, the island sink down. So sometimes things don't go quite according to plan. And this particular dive was one of those times. We'd gone off the boat, we'd gone down to about 16 metres, and we were enjoying the lake. Amazing, we saw, you could see the hot water from the volcano coming out um, through the rocks. And you could actually feel the temperature of the volcano. Fascinating, it was actually boiling water coming through at the bottom of the lake. We even got to see a few of the local fish, convict cichlids. But then things took a slight turn for the worse. And as I was diving, I suddenly heard a huge bang from behind my head. And I was suddenly left without air, which is every diver's nightmare. So luckily, with um, really good training that we had from um, Scuba Junkie in Borneo, I was able to make some good decisions in such a bad situation. So the first thing I tried was to fill for my spare air, but unfortunately, my brain was thinking, I don't actually know whether the air's gonna work because I'm not sure exactly what happened behind my head, and I was getting quite desperate for a breath. So, um, Marianne was my buddy and luckily she was only a few meters away. So I managed to swim over to Marianne, grabbed her BCD, turned her around and grabbed her spare air. But, because I was desperate for air, I didn't clear the water in her regulator and purge and I managed to breathe in a mouthful of water, which I hastened to add then started to make me cough. Um, and, sorry Marianne, I even managed to pull out her regulator in the process of trying to grab the spare one. But it was okay, I got air and we managed to surface safely. Somehow we managed to kick or knock the GoPro camera on as we were surfacing and Gladys came to life and she started filming um, as we were heading to the surface. We got back on the boat and there was no primary regulator, which is your main breathing um, apparatus, attached to the tank. So, here's a lesson for all you divers and a bit of advice for the future. Always dive close to your buddy because you never know when something like this could happen. So Mary and I have been talking a lot about it and we've decided to do um, a rescue diver course at some point in the future and become a master diver so that we have more knowledge and experience on checking equipment and things like that to prevent such a thing happening in the future. But thank God um, the training kicked in and we didn't swim to the, I didn't swim to the surface in a panic, I went to Marianne. So that is why, unfortunately, the diving video ended so abruptly. We're in San Salvador. We are, and we have just come down to the Multi Plaza shopping center here in San Salvador. And it's beautiful. It is. It's got all lots of modern shops, a really modern shopping center, and it's even got a huge food hall. It has food court spectacular. Fun fact, we thought that there was US dollars and a sell El Salvadorian currency, but we mm. found out that actually just everything's in dollars. Yeah, so the dollar is the local currency here. Yeah. Um, and another, another bit of advice, when you're in the capital cities, um, yeah. if you need to go to an ATM, go to ones in the shopping centers. Um, they're very good. They've got uh, security guards in the shopping centers, so you're taking money out in a safe environment. Yeah, there are pump-action shotguns 
uh, dotted around the entrance and exits of the shopping mall. So you feel as though all security is being taken seriously. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, every Uber driver and everybody we've spoken to has insisted that we use Ubers and we use taxis and that as tourists we shouldn't be walking around unless we're with somebody local who knows exactly where uh, the dodgy streets are and we take it seriously. Yeah, or in the, I think the main centre of town, the historic area around the cathedral, which yeah. we've, we've heard is a safe area yeah. for tourists to walk around. So we're yeah. going to check that out over the coming days. Yeah. Um, but generally, yeah, we're taking taxis from sort of A to B uh, once we've worked yeah. out where we're going. Yeah, we haven't felt in any danger. We no. haven't felt as though there's a problem, but we're just passing on the warning that we've been given. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's you should listen to local warnings. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Uber drivers watching our YouTube videos. <laughs> we are super lucky because the hosts that we're staying with, who are fabulous, are making the national dish called pupusa. <laughs> and here is a demonstration. Right, we take a lump of dough which comes from here and then it is flattened into a shape like this and then we put some ingredients yes loroco loroco which is a type of flour and then now we're going to add a special cheese se llama es quesillo quesillo and then we put that ingredient together squeeze it at the top and then the magic happens so there is an incredibly hot pan I don't know if the microphone picked up the sizzle but that is the way it's cooked it's pan fried and it's already starting to smell lovely so a little bit of oil has been added to help with the frying process so the way to check if they're cooked is to come over, just touch them, feel them. They should be a little bit crunchy on the outside and a little bit soft on the inside. Good job! So we have lovely Nancy who has brought us the speciality. Look at that. Se llama pupusas. Si pupusas se llama. Pupusas. So I'm going to give these pupusas a try. Mmm, it's like a fresh tortilla that you get, hot, with um, some filling in. Mmm, delicious. Well, Chris and I have been absolutely spoilt this evening. We've been invited to an art exhibition that's being put on in this beautiful building behind us. The host at our hostel, um, she's an artist, so she has been invited, and her husband, who is also absolutely lovely as well, they've invited us to this beautiful exhibition, and um, there is free wine, free food, and everything is so lovely. Um, so we're really, really spoiled. Oh, the pieces of artwork here are absolutely amazing. And uh, apparently there's loads of um, famous people from El Salvador, like this famous uh, artists and writers and uh, politicians, they're just famous people from San Salvador. So yeah, really uh, honoured that we've been invited here tonight. I have just had a lovely chat with the local beer company called Carejo Brewery, which is the legend brewery. They are El Salvadorian San Salvador based and they have three restaurants and a brew house just down the road. This beer is actually quite a strong tasting lager and um, I'm not a massive lager drinker, but Chris isn't drinking it, I am, and it's very nice. We are gonna go diving in a crater ah, of an active volcano. Ah, amazing. <laughs> 
So we're just waiting for the guys from um, San Salvador divers to pick us up and then we'll be on our way. Cut. So we're just waiting for the front bit. You've had two coffees. <laughs> right, cut. And for the purposes of the chicken being in the corner of the shot, <laughs> they are completely vegetarian. <laughs> there is no chicken involved. Chickenless. Yeah, no chickens were harmed in the making of this program. Amazing.